Okay, um, here we go with 8.3, graphing f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So you can see that what we're going to be adding in here is the bx part and being able to see what that does to our parabola. Because in the past, in 8.1, we did ax squared. In 8.2, we did ax squared plus c. And now we're adding the bx. Well, let's go ahead and start with this warm up. And it says complete the exercise. Does 4 3 satisfy the equation y equals 3x squared minus x plus 7? So I'm sure you know what to do with that. I'm just trying to figure out whether that's a solution. So go ahead and plug in 4 for x and 3 for y and tell me what you think. Remember, super important to actually be active in doing these. So pause the video, do it, and then, you know, watch and see. Make sure you did it right. So you can see that if you plug in 3 for y and 4 for x, you end up getting 3 does not equal 51. So does that satisfy it? Absolutely not. It doesn't. Okay, try the second one. Okay, we're back. And in this one, if you plugged in negative 1 uh, for y and 0 for x, you ended up getting negative 1 equals negative 1. So would that satisfy it? The answer would be yes. Okay, try the third one. Does 5 comma 0 satisfy this equation here? So if you plug in 0 and 5, we're obviously going to get uh, 25 to squ or 5 squared is 25 times 4 is 100 minus 10 and then plus 4. Obviously, that does not equal 0. So that would be no, it does not satisfy it. And what about negative 1, negative 9 into this one? And if you plug those in, you'll see that it does, in fact, work. Because negative 1 squared is 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, negative 4, bring it down, and those combine to give us negative 9. Awesome. Okay, so our learning target for this lesson is to be able to find the vertex and other characteristics of the graph of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, what we're adding in here is just this bx part. Okay, so we're going to start uh, by looking at two different graphs and seeing kind of what happens with these. So the first one is y equals 2x squared minus 8x, and I've done all of that in red. And then in blue, I've done y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph the blue one first. And I've given you some points that we're going to plug in. So um, if you plug in 0, Go ahead and one and two and three and four. Let's go ahead and plot those points. So go ahead and do that. And again, you just draw your curve as best you can. Try and keep it neat, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So obviously, if you plugged in zero, you got ended up getting six. If you plugged in one, hopefully you got zero because one squared would be one times two would be two, um, and then negative eight times one would be negative eight plus six gets you zero. And for 2, hopefully you got negative 2. And for 3, you got 0. And for 4, you got 6. So then go plot those points. And then do the same thing here. Um, you might want to use a different color, but you don't certainly don't have to, into the y equals 2x squared minus 8x. And your points would have been 0, negative 6. Plug a 2 in, you're going to get negative 8. And if you plug a 3 in, you get negative 6. And if you plug a 4 in, you get 0. So when you go ahead and graph these, you should have gotten something that looked like this. OK, now we're going to answer some questions on the next slide about this. So let's keep this in mind. Hopefully, you have that there in front of you. Um, first question is, what do you notice about the x-coordinate of the vertex of each graph? Well, here's a vertex. Here's a vertex. The x-coordinate of this one is 2. And ooh, holy smokes, it's 2 right there also. So what we would say is, is that they are the same. OK. Use the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 8x to find its x-intercepts. Verify your answer by solving 0 equals 2x squared minus 8x. OK, well, let's look at the graph. And we're talking about the red one. And you can see here that it looks like the x-intercept is there at 0. And there's one here at 4. OK, so it looks like that's what it would be. 
zero, zero, and four, zero. And why would we set uh, zero to verify? Because what's true of every x-intercept? The y-coordinate is always zero. So we plug in zero for y. So if we do that, um, we then, I, you can see I factored out a 2x. I'm going to use a zero product property. I'm going to set each factor equal to zero. And what do we end up getting? x equals zero and four. So that verifies it. OK, now let's compare the value of the x coordinate of the vertex with the values of the x-intercepts. OK, so for that same problem, the one in, or the same parabola, the one that's in red, notice we got 0 and 4 for the intercepts. And look at the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's 2. So 0 and 4, wow, it's right between them. It's the average. It's the mean. That's going to be important to remember. So we wrote in the x-coordinate is the average or mean of the x-intercepts. OK. Um, OK, so let's uh, solve 0 equals ax squared plus bx for x by factoring. So we're just doing what we did in, in chapter 7. So we're, let's go ahead and take out the greatest common factor, the x, right? And we're left with ax plus b. So we factored as much as we can. We can't factor ax plus b any further. So let's set each factor equal to 0. So x equals 0, ax plus b equals 0. And let's solve for x. Well, obviously, the first one's already done. To solve ax plus b equals 0, what would you need to do? Subtract b, divide by a, and we end up getting negative b over 2a. OK? Negative b over a, excuse me. OK. What are the x-intersects of the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx? Well, remember, since that's we would figure that out by saying it equal to 0, haven't we already figured that out? Yes, we have. They would be 0 and negative b over a. OK. All right, so let's copy and complete the table to verify our answers. So notice, if we set x equal to 0, what's y going to end up being? 0. And if I set negative b over a, x equal to negative b over a, watch what happens here. Okay, so here I'm going to plug in negative b over a, right? And I should get 0 uh, for y. So let's see. Okay, I have to go square negative uh, b over a. If I do that, I'm going to end up getting a times b squared over a squared. And remember the negative squared also, so it becomes a positive. And when I multiply b times negative b over a, I get minus b squared over a. Okay. Well, if you take a look at that, doesn't this end up simplifying if I cancel an a with an a squared to b squared over a? And then if I subtract b squared over a, and isn't a number divided or my, a number subtracted from itself equal to zero? Sure is. So we get our y is equal to 0, which makes sense, because that's what we wanted. We wanted to verify that the x-intercepts, and when is that? It's when y equals 0. So these are our x-intercepts. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at this now. OK. So complete the following logical argument. The x-intercepts of the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx are 0 and negative b over a. We just talked about that right over here, right? We just figured that out. OK. The vertex of the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx occurs when x equals, remember what the vertex would be. If we know the x-intercepts, the vertex, we said the x-coordinate would be the mean of those. Well, wouldn't that be negative b over 2a? Because this is the average of 0 and negative b over a, right? Because you take half of it, right? So be negative b over 2a. All right, the vertices of the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx and y equals ax squared plus bx plus c have the same x-coordinate. We saw that all the way back when we did this, right? Remember when we were back here? We saw that they were the same, right? We just This one just meant that it was lower. But the vertex had the same x-coordinate. So the vertex of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c occurs when x equals, well, it would still be the same thing, right? Negative b over 2a. 
All right. So here's kind of everything put together here. So we're graphing f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. As we've talked about since the beginning of the unit, the graph opens up when a is greater than 0, and it opens down when a is a negative. Okay. The y-intercept is c. So y-intercept means where our curve intercepts or hits the y-axis, right? So c would represent what? The y-coordinate. And we know the x-coordinate is 0 because it's on the y-axis. Okay. The x-coordinate of the vertex, as we just figured out, is negative b over 2a. So here's what b is. Here's what a is. Depends you know, what's in there. But it would be negative b over 2a. Okay. And the axis of symmetry, as we know, is just x equals whatever the x-coordinate is of the vertex. So it would be x equals negative b over 2a. Okay. And obviously, this is one that shows us when a is greater than 0. Okay. All right, so let's go through and find the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the graph of f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 1. OK, and I put a little reminder in here. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. OK, so what's b in this case? 8. What's a in this case? 2. So all we do is plug in. Let's go ahead and do that. And if you plugged in, you should have had negative 8 over 2 times 2, which ends up getting us negative 2. So what's the axis of symmetry? Remember, it's a line, so we want to name it properly. We would say it's x equals negative 2. Okay. Now, we have to do part b, which is to find the vertex of the graph. Well, if we know the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2, then what's the x-coordinate of the vertex? Yeah. Of course, it's negative 2, because the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Okay. So what would we do now, though, in order to figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex? Well, wouldn't it be figured out just by plugging in negative 2 for x and then solving for f of negative 2, or in other words, what y is? Sure, so go ahead and do that. So. Hopefully, when you plugged in negative 2, you would have squared the negative 2 and gotten 4. So we end up getting 8 there. 2 times 4 is 8. And then negative 16 from the 8 times negative 2, and then the minus 1. So what does that get us? Negative 9. So what would the vertex be if the x coordinate's negative 2 and the y coordinate's negative 9? It would be negative 2, negative 9. Okay. Let's try some more of those. Again, I've kind of put a little reminder here for you just to help you out. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the axis of symmetry and then the vertex for each of these. OK, so why don't you go ahead and try the first one here. So plugging into negative b over 2a, you would have gotten 2 6, which reduces to 1 3rd, because there's a negative of a negative. So what's the axis of symmetry? x equals one-third. Okay, now you need to find the vertex. Well, we already know what the x-coordinate is, right? It's going to be the same as whatever the axis of symmetry is. So we know it's one-third, and then you would just plug in. Okay, one-third squared is one-ninth times three, and then minus two-thirds there, right, gets us one-third minus two-thirds, which is negative one-third. So what would the vertex be? x comma y, right? So it's one-third comma negative one-third. OK, try the middle one now. All right, so back here. So obviously, again, axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. So it would be negative and then 6 over 1 times 2 which ends up reducing to negative 3. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. We need, now need to figure out the vertex. We know the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? We know it's negative 3, so we're going to plug in for negative 3, and we get g of negative 3. In other words, what would the y-coordinate be? What would the function be if x is negative 3? 
should have gotten negative 4. So your vertex is negative 3 comma negative 4. Now you might be saying, well, okay, well, great, what's that going to do for us? Well, if we wanted to go and graph it, we could go and graph it starting at least by having this point, um, and we know what the axis of symmetry is, and we're going to learn some more information shortly that would help us to graph pretty quickly. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and do this next one. So go ahead and figure out the axis of symmetry, again, using negative b over 2a. Hopefully you ended up getting 7. And then we need to figure out the vertex. So think about what you would do. You already have half of it, right? You would plug in 7 for x to figure out what h of 7 would be. In other words, the y coordinate when x is 7. And hopefully you ended up getting 41 over 2, or 20.5 for you decimal fans. So what would our vertex be? It would be 7, 41 over 2. OK, so now we're actually going to graph. And we're going to use a lot of this information to help us out, Okay, instead of just plotting points. So we're going to graph f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. OK, well, what do we know? There's a lot that we know just from learn, looking at this equation. Oh, by the way, we're also going to describe the domain and the range. OK, so find and graph the axis of symmetry. a is 3, b is negative 6, c is 5. So what would negative b over 2a be? The negative and then negative 6 over 2 times 3. So it's actually what? Two negatives will make the positive. So it's 6 over 6, which is 1. OK, so we know that axis of symmetry is x equals 1. So we know the x coordinate, therefore, is 1. What will we do now? Well, same thing we've been doing for the last few problems. We're going to plug in 1 for x to figure out what the y value would be. And if you do that, plugging in 1, you end up getting 2. So what's the vertex? 1, 2. So we have a point. Go plot that point on your graph. I'm going to cover up the, uncover the graph at the end. OK, so next step, use the y-intercept to find two more points on the graph. OK, well, again, we know c is 5, right? So the y-intercept is at 5, right? So what point would that mean? Well, if it's the y-intercept, what's your x-coordinate for the y-intercept always? Yeah, 0. So our point is 0, 5. And because the axis of symmetry is 1, x equals 1, what other point would also laugh, lie on the graph? Remember, it's axis of symmetry. It cuts the parabola in half. So if we have a point that's at 0, 5, maybe I should uncover this just to show you, right? There's 0, 5, and then there's our vertex down there. Aren't we also going to have another point that's at a y value of 5 that's over the same distance from our axis of symmetry, which again, it would be right here, this far over. Yeah, we would. So we would have another point at what? 2 comma 5. OK, then you could draw your curve. And I know it won't be perfect, but at least by having these guide points, we have a sense of what it would look like, right? OK, um, what would the domain be? Well, remember, we should have arrows on these, right? This would continue. This is from Desmos. so. It's going to be all real numbers. And what's our range? Well, our range is our possible y values, right? And it never goes below 2. So it's going to be y is what? Greater than or equal to 2. Awesome. OK, moving on. Let's try this one. Similar thing. I want you to really make sure you're trying these on your own. That's the way you're going to learn it best. OK, so we're going to graph the function. Again, let's do the same thing. Let's find that vertex. So. In order to find that vertex, what do we need to do? First thing is find that axis of symmetry, right? So what are we going to use? Good, negative b over 2a. So we plug in 4 for b, 2 for a, and we end up getting 4 over 4, negative, and then 4 over 4, which equals negative 1. So our axis of symmetry is what? x equals negative 1, OK? Now we need to figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex. We know the x, right? So we can plug that in. So hopefully you did this. And you ended up getting 
h of negative 1, or y, is equal to negative 1. So what's our vertex? Negative 1, comma 1. OK, what is our y-intercept? Well, we get that from c. So that is 0, comma 1, because c is 1. What would be another point? Again, this is where you have to remember what the axis of symmetry is saying, right? So we have a vertex at negative 1, 1. Right, we have a y-intercept right there. I'll put it right, perfect, just like that. So there's our y-intercept at zero one. Here is our vertex at negative one, negative one. Basically, the edge of this box, right, is our, our axis of symmetry. So if we're one over this way, we should have another point that mirrors one over this way, right? So what would that be? negative 2 comma 1. So we would have this. We could draw our curve in. What's our domain? Again, it's going to be all real numbers. And what's our range? Well, looks like it would be what? y is greater than or equal to negative 1. Good. All right. Onward. So we're going to graph the function again. Similar thing. I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. So go ahead and try it on your own. See how you do with it. Okay, so obviously uh, we're going to figure out what the axis of symmetry is. It turned out to be x equals 4. To figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex, we just plug in the x equals 4. And you should have gotten uh, negative 9 for the y-coordinate, so it would be what? The vertex would be x comma y, so 4 comma negative 9. Okay, the y-intercept is 0 comma 7, right? because c is equal to 7. What would be another point? Think about this. Think about where, Look at where your vertex is. Hopefully you plotted that at 4, negative 9. You've got 0, comma 7, right? So uh, let's see. Let me cover this way. So we had 0, comma 7, 4, negative 9. So think about it. if this is our axis of symmetry, this is over one, two, three, four spaces. So we've got to go four the other way, right? With the same y. So we'd have a point that's kind of like up there. And what's that point? Yep, eight comma seven. What's our domain? All real numbers. Our range would be, we're going up. And our lowest point, as we know, is our vertex. And its y value is negative nine. So its y is greater than or equal to negative nine. All right, moving on. Try this one. So there's your axis of symmetry. And when we plug in negative 1, we end up getting 3. So what's our vertex? Negative 1, comma 3. OK. What's your y-intercept? Remember, you see. So it's negative 2, so we have a point at 0, negative 2. Okay. Use where you put that axis of symmetry in, going through your vertex, and where you already have a point, and think about where that next point should be, right? Which should be symmetric, right? So should if we've got that so far, right, we need to have another point that's going to be over here. So that's at negative 2, 2. Domain, all real numbers. Range is going to be a little bit different this time, right? It's going to be what? It's going to be y is less than or equal to 3. OK. All right, second part of the lesson, maximum and minimum values. I think you're going to find this to be pretty simple. OK. When we talk about a maximum and minimum value, we're basically talking about the y-coordinate of the vertex. That's really what we're focusing on. So if you can figure out what the vertex is, just look at the y value. And if it's a parabola that opens down when a is what? Less than 0, right? It's the vertex is the maximum value. So it's whatever that y-coordinate is there. Okay. If it's a parabola that opens up when a is greater than 0, then it's the vertex is the minimum point. It's the lowest point. So whatever that y value we say is the minimum value. Simple as that. OK, so let's practice some of this. 
Tell whether the function f of x equals negative 4x squared minus 24x minus 19 has a minimum value or a maximum value. Then find the value. OK. Well, the parabola opens which way? Oh, a is negative 4. So it opens down, right? Because a is equal to negative 4, and therefore it has a maximum value. So the maximum value because the parabola opens down. OK. Now we need to figure out what that value is. Well, we need to get the vertex, right? So we can figure out the x value by doing what? Right, yeah, negative b over 2a. So b is negative 24, a is negative 4, so negative b over 2 times negative a. That all simplifies to negative 3. Take a look at that, right? Figure out the y value. Well, we know that's going to be when x equals negative 3. So just figure out f of negative 3. This becomes negative 3 squared is 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. This is going to give us a positive 72 and a negative 19. So we end up getting 17. So our maximum value, right, is going to be our y value, which is 17. OK. Tell whether the function is a minimum or maximum value, then find that value. All right. So go ahead and try this one on your own. OK, clearly, parabola opens up because a is 8, which is greater than 0. So we know the parabola is going to have a minimum value. OK, find that x value of the vertex. What are you going to use again? Yes, negative b over 2a. So hopefully you got 1 half. What's the y value? Well, figure out what the y value of the vertex is when x is equal to 1 half. So plug in 1 half. I'll use 0.5 here for the decimal fans. And hopefully when you do that, you end up getting negative or positive 4. So remember, it's opening up. So our minimum value is what the y value is. So it's 4. All right. Try this last one here. All right, I'm back. So hopefully you got that it opens down because a is equal to a negative number, in this case, negative 0.25. By the way, would that be a vertical shrink or a vertical stretch? I hope you said vertical shrink, right? Because a is between 0 and negative 1. OK. Um, anyway, getting back to whether it, it opens up or down. Um, it opens uh, down, which means that we have a maximum value, right? The vertex would be the highest point. All right, figure out that x value. Again, negative b over 2a. Um, in this case, we end up getting what we call a super fraction, right? So we simplify 2 times negative 1 fourth to negative 1 half. We know the negatives will end up making a positive. So this is like 3 divided by 1 half. Well, it's not the same as 3 times 2 over 1, or 3 times 2, which is 6. Okay. Now we need to get that y value. So we plug in 6. It gets us 10. So our maximum value is 10. Remember, you can rewind this, go back, look at it again. But hopefully this is making sense. OK, let's take a look at the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan. Uh, it's a su suspension cable bridge, so it's kind of like the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, so there's towers. And you can see that we have an equation here with a very small decimal uh, where x and y are measured in feet. What is the height of the cable above the water at its lowest point? OK, so where would the lowest point be on the parabola? Well, this one opens up, right? This is a positive number, so it's going to be at the vertex. So don't we really just need to figure out what the coordinates are of the vertex? And once I know what the coordinates are of the vertex, the y value is going to be how high it is above the water, because the water is set right here, you know, right on our x-axis. So first we have to figure out the x value. Use negative b over 2a. Oh, I'm sure you'll love doing that math, right? negative uh, 0.37 from our B there, and then 0 0.00098 for our A. 
I'll do the math for you, and that comes out to 1,888 approximately. All right, so what, does that answer the question? No, it doesn't answer the question. Um, it would answer the question or help us answer the question of how you know far apart the two towers are, but that's not what we're asked here. Um, so what are we gonna need to do? Well, plug in 1888, and this all comes out to be about 203. So what would our answer be? About 203 feet. Okay, let's take a look at a different bridge. Again, suspension bridge. Uh, we're looking at two towers, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington. Um, here's a much better picture of it. This actually did happen. There was, you can actually do some research on it if you like, but there was actually, um, I think it was a wind event and it just got it to oscillate at the right frequency and eventually it just came apart. Yeah, read about it, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we know what the, want to know what the height of the cable is above the water at the lowest point, so kind of like down there, like how far above the water it is. All right, so again, similar to the last problem, we need to figure out the vertex, and in particular, the Y coordinate of the vertex. So first we have to do the X, so I'm going to be over 2A, and that gets us 1437.50. What are we going to do with that? Yep, we're going to plug it in and get that the bridge is, or that the Y value is about 176, which means it's about 176 feet above the water at its lowest point. Okay. Ah, water balloons. Yes. A group of friends is launching water balloons. The function f of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 80t plus 5. That represents the height in feet of the first water balloon t seconds after its launch. The height of the second water balloon t seconds after its launch is shown in the graph. So the down here, second balloon. Which balloon went higher? We're going to use Desmos. So what I would suggest you do is go over to Desmos. Remember, you can find that on Big Ideas. Uh, log in, click on the three bars in the upper right, and then go to Math Tools, High School, and find the Desmos graphing calculator. Plug in f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 80t plus 5. Make sure you get it on the setting where you can see kind of like the vertex and the x-intercepts. Okay, so um, which one's higher? Well, wouldn't we just compare the, the vertices? So on the second balloon, it looks like these are each what? Each box is, vertically is about 25. So it looks like it goes up above 125 to about, oh, what? 130-ish, right? And hopefully on Desmos from doing the first one, we've got something that looks like that. And these boxes are each worth two. So 100, 102, 104. So clearly this one does not go as high. So the second balloon balloon went higher. Okay. Which balloon is in the air lung? What would we need to know in order to answer that question? Well, remember, T represents what? Time. So if we look at where this balloon hits the ground, it's at what time? I don't know. There's four, there's five, looks like about 5.7 or so to me. And you can't see it on my graph here, but you can probably see it on what you did. And you probably saw that it hits or has an x-intercept at right around five, right? So the first water balloon has a height of zero after about five seconds. The second water balloon has a height of zero after about 5.7. So obviously the second one is in the air um, longer. Okay, which balloon reaches its maximum height faster? Think about where the maximum height is. Wouldn't that be at the vertex? So it's a when question, it's asking for time. So the time when it's at its vertex would be what? The T or X coordinate, right? And that looks to be, oh, I don't know, just, bef just before three seconds, right? Which makes sense because it's hitting the ground at about 5.7. So it's about half of that. And here it's, nowhere close to three, right? I mean, it's just barely past two. So um, if you look here, 
It's about 2.5 seconds is what the book put for the first one because it you know comes back down at five and 2.8 seconds for the second. So it's the first balloon that gets there faster. Okay, and finally, let's go ahead and write an equation of a quadratic function that opens up, has a negative y-intercept, and is wider than the graph of y equals x squared, our parent function. And you have a friendly algebra AB teacher hint. Stay calm and break the problem down into parts. I can actually help you do that. Opens up means what? Hopefully you said that it means a is greater than zero. A negative y-intercept means, hopefully you said, c is less than zero. Wider than y equals x squared, and it opens up, means that a needs to be right. Greater than zero, but less than one. So see if you can come up with a sample answer. Here's mine, 0.35x squared minus five. Notice I didn't even put a bx or, you know, yeah, plus bx in there at all. Could have, but it wouldn't have made a difference in this case. All right, well, that covers it for 8.3. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if not, make sure to utilize contact time uh, and ask questions when we next meet up in class. All right, thanks.